But we were talking, we talked at the break about when you start to see how things that seem to be so necessary for the body and all these activities and all this, you start to see that that is really a distraction and you start to hone in on the homing beacon, so to speak, then it's a, it just is a glorious ride, it's a glorious life because, because that's part of why we're here is, um, yeah, it's really quite a spectacular life because when, when you don't put your energy in thinking about a lot of things that seem to be about the body and time and, and protecting and maintaining, a lot of energy goes into that. When you free your mind up from that and you just turn your mind in another direction from all that, then you have an amazing amount of, of energy and an amazing, you might just say you're so open and receptive to miracles coming in you and through you that your life takes on miraculous qualities. And really that's what we loved about the fairy tales, you know, we, we enjoy watching characters in fairy tales that kind of have a magical, mystical, carefree life in which there's joy and glee and excitement and there's a sense of, of the adventure in it. It's not, it's not like the world, the linear world of, of human beings is very much about problem solving. Um, and so much energy is put into problem solving and we might say that from A Course in Miracles per perspective, it's really trying to solve problems in a horizontal way and really it's, it's not going to actually solve the problem. It, you know, it's almost like the world was a setup to have so many problems and so much energy spent in trying to solve the problems inappropriately, like in form, that eventually it gets very depressing and very tiring. Jesus says the world is very tired. Mm -hmm. and, and that is a good description for the the linear world, because you put all this energy in and nothing seems to come of it, just more problems arise. You get another set every day, and then another set, and then another set. And then there, at some point, there has to be something that rises up in your soul, it just says there has to be more than this. I can't really get accustomed to this. I can't really think that this is how it's meant to be. It just, that's how Bill Thedford and uh, Helen Shuckman joined together, you know, Bill was the, was the head of the department and, and Helen worked in that department and they just came together and he just was expressing his frustrations one day and he just said, there has to be another way. And he was quite surprised when she said, you're right Bill, and I'll help you find it. You know, that was, there's the collaboration in mind, there's the joining in that. I find the people, like with Francis and I, how we were brought together, and there's so many people that I've been brought together in their lives. Uh, a few days ago, we went to see a, a new movie that just came out, it's called Begin, Begin, Again. Begin Again. I really enjoyed it. Um, it was, um, what's her name? Mark Ruffalo and, um, yeah, Kira Knightley were in it, but it was a, a beautiful movie of, of going past horizontal love to much more of a divine love. Mm -hmm. um, there was huge collaborations, there was such transparency, such an authenticity and, and I just had people that I've known and lived with for many years and that we were, how many, there's about 20 of us in this movie theater watching this movie together and then the movie ends, the credits roll and there we all are you know, as the whole theater empties out, we're just there. We were just laughing before the, the movie started and then, and that just was the, kind of a buzz of energy, but just, it's just coming together in that same purpose, when that is the purpose of your life, and then, and then watching this new way unfold. It's not really a spatial thing, it's not like living in community in a spatial way. Like uh, Jane Marie and Peter are out and every day is a new day, of discovery. You just gave me their their business card. <laughs> what was the top of the business card? On the road. On the road. Yeah. Unplugged. Unplugged. Yeah, come what may. Come what may. Oh, and then the, the the picture of the road on the business card. On the road, unplugged. Come what may. Come what may. 
and it's this sense of loosening from patterns of thinking your life, you know, thinking you know what your future is going to be. I know when I went through, in the parable of David, through high school, you know, I, I just looked even back at those, those yearbook pictures um, in high school and in college, and I kind of have a kind of a glazed look on the face, kind of a bewildered glazed look, like, I don't know what's coming, but it was like a look at my face, like nothing really that I was seeing on planet Earth was really appealing. Mm. It's why I think a lot of times with teenagers, it, there can be this sense of, um, like a, like a low-grade depression or an anxiety around the future of thinking, oh my gosh, what a daunting task going into adulthood. Yeah. But some of us had, had some nice moments in childhood, you know, I think of playing by the creek and unstructured time and sparkly summer days where we just go out and lose track of, of time and space and just be so absorbed in the play that uh, it was really idyllic, it was just wonderful. Uh, and, and then I'm looking ahead to think, hmm, so now I'm supposed to become a productive <laughs> adult. What, is there anything out there that looks attractive? No. <laughs> and then um, having a, my mother was uh, at the same school where I was, so she knew the guidance counselors and send them out send him out on all these field trips and adventures, find something, find something. But no, there was nothing that could be found. And then when I got into university, the search just continued. You know, you take all the aptitude tests and they tell you your skills, your abilities, oh, I think you're better over in this direction, that direction. No, not appealing, not appealing. And yeah, it took me 10 years of university full time before I think I must have had my, there must be another way moment. And I mean, I, I had lots and lots of skills accumulated after 10 years of university and doing quite well in university, but, but, but like it was like an emptiness, like, no, no, this, I'm still not seeing anything flipping on the radar chart that is a sign of life. <laughs> you know? I mean, I'm looking at the, at the whole gamut and then I started to open up uh, a little bit to like helping professions, feeling like there was something around altruism and something around helping. Wanting to be truly helpful, but not really seeing anything really clear that was clearly lighting up as a way to be truly helpful. And then that's when in, in 1986, um, in pretty much a state of disillusionment with the world, that's when I started to get into humanistic psychology and transpersonal psychology, and then the course dropped in with those as forerunners, and Carl Rogers, and Virginia Satir, and lots of, of amazing thinkers and reflections of my mind that, that there was a pathway beyond this world, but it was totally transcendent. It really wasn't based in any of the, the, the thinking of the world or the, all the different um, disciplines that I had studied, I had studied so many. So, everybody comes to that point in their own way. And did you study also other spiritual things before the course? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was part of, I, I hear a lot of stories about how people were kind of channeled in. We were just talking at breakfast this morning, <coughs> and Karen was saying it was Eckhart Tolle's The Power of Now. Started mentioning, A Course in Miracles, A Course in Miracles, read a quote here and there. Hmm, sounds pretty interesting, curious. Or curiosity can arise, um, and then um, it was uh, disappearance. Who was it that came in? Disappearance, of, disappearance the of the universe. You were saying, Peter. Yeah. The people. I had my inroads. I think I, I think I came across Jerry Jampolsky's "Love Is Letting Go of Fear." Mm -hmm. um, very small book with little cute little caricatures in it. I was like, hmm, this is interesting. It kind of came to me in a number of of different ways where I started to hear it. It. And then I was out in California when I actually came across the book itself, out in La Jolla, very close to where Bill Thetford was and, and the Luckets. But, uh, and Francis shared last night too about, about kind of getting into the course and then teaching it more conceptually 
And then one retreat, when we had a seven day retreat together, it was such a powerful seven days that it just like opened up a whole new world. Almost like that uh, song, A Whole New World, a, a new fantastic point of view. You know, it just starts to, you get a glimmer of, wait a minute, this just isn't some kind of a new theology. This is like a gateway, this is almost like a portal into a, a way of living, a, an actual living experience. And to me that's what it's been. Um, it was actually the, my heart lighting up and the, the swirl of joy and glee and energy that I felt in my heart that I just said, wow, this is it, I've hit the mother limb. Uh, I, I don't know what I did or how I got here, but, but that gets you into this, this like, it's almost like a beam me up Scotty, it's like a, a vortex of energy that just starts to pull you away from everything that you thought your life would be. It sends you off into a whole new trajectory, actually, absolutely unimaginable trajectory, and that's for me, that's, that's absolutely essential in unlearning the world. I had to have something, it's like, show me, Lord, show the way. You've got to, you know, like, what was the one in the movie, show me the money. I mean, show me the joy, show me the love, show me the spirit. I need to be drawn in, I need to be taken in by something that's so expansive and so transcendent. Then I can get my heart over to it. That was the thing, I was always like in a holding pattern, when I wasn't seeing anything that really totally sparkled for me, I couldn't throw myself into it, you know, whatever it was. And then I meet people too that, like with Francis, who, who had, was living a, what the world would call a, a very successful, good life. And then, it, I guess for you it took the same thing, it took an experience to start to send you off in another direction. And start to say, well, maybe this isn't so, um, so successful or so really what I truly want. Yeah, it seems like the material things have cumul accumulated and built up, but it's just emptiness in it. And for me, you know, the Spirit apparently um, guided me to just first let go of some of the things I hold on to too tight um, as my security or something that's just I couldn't let go of. And those things, because I put my security in those things, I completely lose sight of what is truly mm -hmm. the source of, you know, that sustain me. Like, I, I couldn't see it. It's not that I'm not living in divine providence, or I just couldn't see it because I trust everything that I build up myself and, you know, everything in the world, the possessions and relationship and career. So it was a very, you know, seeming, it seems radical, but actually my experience was very gentle, like the Spirit is saying, put those aside first, because you, your mind needs to be convinced of something completely different that you, you actually are blinded of right now. So you have to put those aside. And even like with everything, my relationship with money, with career, with all the people around me, have been tran completely translated, retranslated by the spirit. I was just remembering um, last year when I was in Australia traveling with a friend. We were traveling, and just the experience was so apparent and obvious to me that everywhere I went, I met my mother, my father, my sister. Mm -hmm. It was just so unbelievable, like the patterns that the, you know, the way they took care of me and the way they asked me questions it was just my mother there, but in a way that is not in the same body or they they weren't playing the roles with me, and yet I could I, I could recognize that's the spirit was saying you know don't you know have a fixed relationship with a body relax all those roles and boxes in your mind and take what is given and really see, you know, there is experience that to, to really be convinced that what is given is my will. What is, what is given is the best for me. And to, you know, even think that I want something else, I need to strive for something else, is really just to say that whatever is in front of you is not my will. And I have a separate will than this. And I know what they are, so I need to strive for that. But 
just to be able to relax the mind and accept what is right in front, eventually really leads to this experience to recognize, oh my God, this is my will, and everything that I have is what I want and is what I need, and there's nothing else. So just really open up even to the idea of relationship. Like, feels really strange to think that I have a relationship with a body, because that is really about behavior. Do you have a relationship with this person? It's saying, do you, these two bodies behave in a certain way in this box? And that is like, I don't really quite know how to relate to that question because experience-wise, I am constantly in relationship, but the body shifts, like with my mother, the, the kind of relationship I'm, I used to have with her now is with anyone. Like I can have a momentary feeling of recognition and yet with this, that particular body of my mother, I, I don't necessarily have the same way that we interact with each other. It could be more, we can talk about metaphysical ideas, and we could talk about something else, but not a mother-daughter kind of conversation and dialogue. But when I went out and traveled, someone could just look up to me and feed me the way that she used to do. And I just see like the relationship is completely not not with a single body, it's just a momentary momentary experience. Momentary experience. And then when people really ask questions about a relationship, sometimes I will think maybe that's the question is about whether the body behaves in this way, whether that fits into the box. And then I, I would direct my answer. But in my own experience, it's just a continuous experience. Like with body with David, for example, it's just this deep collaboration and mind together and we just feel the inspiration to speak together and to talk and that's just a very deep experience and I can't really fit that into a box depending, you know, it just feels like everything, all the, the boxes and the definitions just being washed and, it, and there's a one vast experience that's ongoing. Yeah, you know, and, and you start to feel more and more as you go into it that the collaboration is really with the Holy Spirit. That, that when you give yourself over to the Spirit to be used, you are going to have a loosening from all attachments to form. I think of the, the Beyond All Idols section of A Course in Miracles, it's back towards the back of the text, but um, there's a line in it, God knows not form. That's a, that's a one sentence, great one-liner, but metaphysically, if God knows not form, and I want to know God, you can see where it's going. God knows not form. If I'm going to give myself over to God and go for complete alignment with God, I'm going to move back towards abstraction. And I talked about that last night, that, that love, light, the kingdom of heaven, God, they're all purely abstract. There's nothing on earth that even is a hint of abstraction. Everything is very specific and concrete as part of linear perception. And then when you get into this unified perception, it feels much more expansive. You don't feel, you're not looking at form the same way. Because I was just, just going to, you just explained it, I was just going to say, well, what about the script is written that you keep talking about? If the script is written and you need to be in relationship with these one, one or two people, or, or in your case, maybe many, does that fit on the different level? Are we talking about different levels now? Well, when people have asked me about the script is written, which is a line from the, the workbook, the main emphasis is on the last word written, which is past tense. Right. It's really, the script is written is just another version of lesson number seven, I see only the past. Okay. So, in other words, nothing to figure out about that, because it's a linear construct, and it's just saying it's the past. Okay. And imagine if you could free your mind from saying, see, I don't really have to work on the script anymore. Yeah. Imagine, you know. I don't have to write the script. I don't have to yeah. write the script. I just gotta live it. I just go, sort of walk through it. Yeah, well, that's where I'm, I'm going to take it with, here we are, we're right into unlearning the world. And I mentioned in Beyond Our Idols area, it was God knows not form. There's another great line in there. He says, your will is universal and cannot be content with form of any kind. Wow. Yeah. 
Your will is universal. He's talking about the will of God. He's talking about Christ's will and the will of God. Your will is universal and cannot be content with form of any kind. Then there's another line that I like from that section. When you decide upon the form of what you want, you lose the understanding of its purpose. When you decide upon the form of what you want, you lose the understanding of its purpose. Like an eclipse, like if if this is content, or we'll say this hand is love, and you get all mesmerized by the form, and, and it's like an eclipse where the form comes before the content, and that this book has a lot to do with form and content. I'll tell you, you're gonna, you'll see the topic come up again and again and again. Love is content, and form is the distraction away from that content. So. When, the, when you decide upon the form of what you want, you lose the understanding of its purpose. So you're blinded then. You're blinded. And to the extent that you open yourself to forgiveness and say, Lord, teach me how to forgive illusions, you will, the form will fade and fade and fade away until all questions about form will just evaporate in the mind. You, you will see that why would I give my mind over to such tiny, petty, little nothingness, you know, of, of all these questions? All the questions around form in this world seem to be the most important when people say, well, come on, now be practical with me. What's the bottom line? How much money, how much return do I get on my investment? And, you know, where is it going? Is she going to marry me or not? You know, is, is, are we just... Yeah, exactly. It just goes, everything is so focused, riveted on the form, and the content is obscured. For example, we have a great sharing, we're here with you now, sharing, 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 I get back on the plane, I go back, then I have, I fly to Mexico to collaborate with another friend of mine, Maria Felipe. So I'm going down there to collaborate. Then I fly back, then I fly to Brazil to uh, collaborate with another friend of mine, Armel. Then I fly back from Brazil, and then I have a festival, uh, and, like, and there's a woman flying in from uh, Europe who's just like a happy as a little child, just very gleeful, Lisa Cairns, and she's flying in. So it's just collaborate, and then after that I go, I go back to Mexico, collaborate with a whole group of people, and then I take off for about almost two months, um, two and a half months. And, and Francis is part of it, but there's also Jason, Kirsten, Michael. Configurations, the Spirit's using all the forms, almost like playmates, little playmates that are coming in just as part of these configurations. It could be one, it could be two, three, four, you know, it's just, it's really, the form is irrelevant. It's the glee factor, it's the joy, it's the love, it's the happiness that's, that's really the content. And the form is just given. It's almost like you could think of the form as almost like the props that will work. Like I've traveled in 31 countries and I speak to all these p cultures and people that, that I don't speak their language. And the Spirit sends me the most magnificent translators. Where we are so connected, so telepathic. It doesn't matter their age either. Um, one time I was in Switzerland and they were having the most difficult time finding me a translator. They didn't know what they were going to do, and they, they, a French translator. And they finally found this this 20-year-old student who was in a translation school, I think, in Paris. And they pulled her out. They said, could you go translate for this guy over in Geneva and everything? And she comes, and she's sitting next to me, and I happen to have a Translate, French translation of A Course in Miracles in front of me. So I, she's got maybe half an hour to prepare before the, she knows nothing of A Course in Miracles, mm -hmm. nothing about metaphysics and everything. She's a 20 year old translating student and she's going to be translating for the Holy Spirit for like a whole day. And she's just so wide eyed and willing. I give her the book, she opens it up and she starts glancing through it. And she comes to this word and she said, um, um, it was, she came upon the word atonement, which probably is the most important um, idea in A Course in Miracles. The sole function of the miracle worker and the teacher of God is to accept the atonement for himself. It's that important. It's the only function really that we have. It, and she finds the word. 
And she goes, hmm. Because in the French translation, they, they still have put a word that is not really a very good word for atonement. Um, and it, because it has, still has some aspects of like paying a price. It still has, some, she's 20 years old, she's not even a core student, she's picking up that there's still some sacrificial tones in whatever word that they've chosen that's made it all the way through in the French translation. So she's looking at me and she's explaining to me that this, this does not seem to be the right word. And uh, she says, uh, I said, well, what, what is the word that you're feeling? And she said, correction. Oh. And I said, oh. yes, <laughs> you're my translator. <laughs> this, is, this is sent from the Holy Spirit, you know. And that's what I've noticed, it, that I have all these great collaborations with translators. It wouldn't be the same without the translation. You know, it's a, it's a collaborative effort. Miracles are... Our collaborative venture. Jesus says that in the Course. And, and imagine just being open in your life to feel like, wow, that's the case. So I just want to be open to the adventure of it and the collaboration of it. And I want to welcome everyone who's sent. Because no one is sent by mistake. It's a, it's a very huge function that we have, forgiving the world, and, there, and no one is sent by mistake. Even us, we're down here and this book is 20 years in the making. That's right, it only took 20 years to finish this book. It took about a year and a half or two years to, all, to start to bring, bring it together. But what is different, what makes this book any different from most books? Well, with major publishers of books and everything, when you get a, a major publisher, one of the things is major publishers want to make money on things. you notice that about things in the world. <laughs> that everything through the ego is a commodity to, be, to make a profit on. And what makes this strikingly different is, this book is actually just a website that has been on the internet for free for years and years and years. This is just a different form of the same content. Jesus said something that really struck me in the Bible. He said, freely you have received, now freely give. Freely give. So, with books like this, I mean, everything that comes out in terms of books that has anything to do with me is already available for free. People just have to go search for it. But it's already been made available free. It's not kept apart to be sold for a profit, to be sold, you know, to make money or anything. That that motive is not in it. It's it's totally just this website is called Teacher of Teachers, um, on because it's a tribute to the Holy Spirit, and it, on the web it's called Teacher of Teachers. Here it's called Oh my gosh, it's a book. It, you can put it in your hands. It's unwind your mind back to God. So, so it's the motive, it's the purpose underneath that's, that's very, very, very important. And that's something that's been important to me. It's like everything that I s receive that is always for me, for freedom, I want to give it away. I want to extend it. And I, I just have given different ways to do it. And this is one... Uh, it's kind of fun. It's like a novel. It's just a different form of the very same thing. The title is very brings you right into it. I mean, just the word unwind. It's very alluring to me. Very <laughs> 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 okay, the Holy Spirit's doing its job. <laughs> I've heard that comment a number of times. Actually, people, have, a number of people have said that. Yeah. You know, we keep saying, I, I thought it was funny, given our, what we're learning about time, that we keep saying it took 20 years, you know, and this book is the culmination. So I'm thinking of it as that book on that table created the last 20 years. <laughs> Here. Right? You know, instead of, take, it took 20 years to write it, that book created the last 20 years of comments on the website. 
Yeah, it's the same thing. You just take all the causation out of everything and then you can really have fun. Uh, and it's also like of all places, we're kind of premiering it right here because Karen was like, oh, come back, come back. Mm -hmm. We were back, we were here a while ago. I don't know how long it was when Francis May, and I were here. They can't do it. Yeah. No, I was just talking about when Francis when was here. When Francis was here. Oh, Francis, April yeah. of 2013. Yeah, April 2013. April 2013. And now, then we were back here again with the Quantum Love Tour, mm -hmm. uh, kind of doing it through the quantum perspective, and now this, so, yeah. It's an invitation, you know, really, this is like an invitation. It's like, uh, I always like that about, uh, what the belief do we know, you know, uh, it's Fred Allen Wolf with the hair, you know, at yeah. the very end, saying, don't just take my word for it, find out for yourself. We're in an adventure of, discovery, a discovery of our Christ Self, of pulling back all the parameters, all the limitations, every limiting belief. There's one little blurb on here that is interesting in the back, middle of the book here. Um, it says, message from the Holy Spirit, right there in the kind of lavender <laughs> words, right in the middle in the back. And it says, I will work with your beliefs, guiding you step by step as you unwind your mind from the many false concepts you believe keep you safe and make you happy. Only the release from these false beliefs will bring you true happiness and lasting peace. And that's got that unwind word in it that came from, to me from the Holy Spirit. It was like a very clear directive to me that I would be undergoing seemingly an unwinding process and the length of that process really is not determined by anything in the world, it's really our willingness, our readiness and our willingness, you know, to be unwound. It has nothing to do with anything else. We don't have any benefits from wealth or things, appearances in the world, there's nothing that gives us an advantage. But you can't get away from this book if you're a searcher, because the, you got the title in the front, and then you've got your picture that draws you in in the back, because you could see the Holy Spirit over you. Just, it's just, the joy, I see the joy of the Holy Spirit in your face. Yeah. I was so it's really, really beautiful. It's really, I'm, I'm not trying to smooth you up or anything. <laughs> 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 it's working for you. The front cover and the back cover. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. I will tell our uh, I will tell our publishing team <laughs> it will be they'll say you'll be thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> but just remember she's the one who pulled the fire alarm. So she's <laughs> 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 okay. Yeah, we were talking about uh, I read ahead. I like looking up topics in the book and reading ahead. I like the way you laid out each of the sections with topics. And somewhere in there, I believe you talk about how in the Course it's quoted that all we need is a little willingness. But then you mentioned that somewhere in the Manual for Teachers, something about we're, we're stepping up our willingness. Can you talk about that a bit? Yeah, that's where he mentions great willingness. He talks about little willingness all the way through the Course, and then, and then the it manual. takes great willingness to see that all events, outcomes, circumstances are, are helpful. I mean, that's coming back more to the, the Bible, all things work together for them who love the Lord. In the Course it says all things work together for good. There are no exceptions except in the ego's judgment. An amazing unified perspective, which has to be simultaneous, you know, to be true, or even to resonate. Because from the linear perspective it just seems like there's victims and victimizers, there's good fortune, there's bad fortune, there's uh, good outcomes, and there's bad outcomes. Um, you know, it's not seen that, that, that all those seeming outcomes along the timeline are just interpretations and judgments. You know, for, like for example, a stock market crash. You know, whether it's way back in the, the, the big crash, you know, way back in the, after the 20s, the end of the 20s, um, um, where, or well, even more recently, uh, with like a, the recent recession, was that around 2008 or whatever? It's from the ego's perspective, these, these are crisis times. You know, this is, 
in a world of bigger, better, faster, more, in a world where everything is supposed to grow. Even churches are supposed to grow. If you have a, a church that, that's flat lines or <laughs> like this, it's like you are not working for the Lord. The Lord has, does not make a shrinking church. Oh, really? I mean, I had a friend out in... Some of you might have heard of Hugh Prather. He's, he yeah. was a, yeah. uh, Hugh and Gail, he passed away I think, but he, he and his wife um, formed out in, I think it was New Mexico, <coughs> or maybe it was Arizona, the Disposable Church. <laughs> they formed the Disposable Church. I'm like, isn't that wonderful? That knowing from the beginning that whatever is a building or an organization or anything of this world, of course it's temporary and of course it's disposable. And, and in fact, it, it would have to dispose of itself as soon as you realize that you are the living church, that your mind, that your essence, that your presence, that your spirit is the church. It has nothing to do with buildings, it has nothing to do with congregations, it has nothing to do with attendance. Tithing, 10% of your income, my gosh, is that the best we can do? My gosh, we are the givers of life as the Christ. We are created in the likeness and image of God. We are life itself, eternal life. And so, the best that we could be as a church would be as a reflection of that eternal life. So over the years, you know, the first kind of symbol I got when I, I had a friend of mine said, oh, you're going to be traveling all over the world and you're going to be going more places than you ever know, but you, you know, you, you need a non-profit foundation to help funnel some of the money. You can't, you know, it's not going to, it's going to hold you back money unless you find a way to just let it be used in a non-profit way. So I said, okay, then go ahead and do it. So he went ahead and he came to me for a name and the name that I received was Foundation for the Awakening Mind because that's what's happening. This mind is falling asleep. In the Bible it says Adam fell asleep and there's no place in the Bible where it says Adam woke up. I would say Jesus Christ appearing <laughs> uh, as, as the resurrected uh, Adam, yeah. uh, basically Adam, yeah. the way, the truth, and the life, you know, that's one with God. I mean that to me is, that's the wake up right there. It just doesn't say Jesus was Adam awake, you know, but I can kind of read between the lines saying, oh, Here's a witness of mind awake. So, so I titled it the Foundation for the Awakening Mind back in 1999, and then that foundation is still going today, and it's still extending uh, beautifully with websites and all kinds of different things. And then when we got the we got the guidance to do a church, and it was like, oh my gosh, I can't tell you the different people around the world that wrote in and said, please. David, don't go down that road. <laughs> My God. Basically, like when Jesus came, they said, nothing good can come from Nazareth. Uh, when, when we were guided to do a church, people said, nothing good has ever come from a church. <laughs> everything, everything rotten has come from churches. But, but we were guided, and then soon a name came in, and eventually it, it evolved to become known as Living Miracles. We were just talking recently, that's... We like that combination of words and symbols we've been giving, living miracles. And then it became pretty much a global ministry and it seemed to grow and grow and grow and, and at times shrink and shrink and do whatever things do. But, but we've never really been concerned about the form of it because it's the content, it's the love and the forgiveness that that we need to experience to reach that love and to experience that love. That's the most important thing. So, it's kind of fun. It, it, it's every day we really don't have an idea. We don't really have any ambition for the world. There's, we don't have goals. We don't ever have meetings where we sit down and go, okay, what are our goals for this year? We, the goal would be to let go of the concept of a year. <laughs> You know, to believe there is a year. <laughs> okay, we need to forgive the concept of a year. You see how different it is from how the world seems to operate, which is always bigger, better, faster, more. How can we grow? How can we expand? How can we, you know, we're just not interested in that. And state of mind is really what, what is our full focus and attention. To be 
in the kingdom of heaven is merely to put your full focus, your full attention on it. I thought you were going to say to be or not to be. <laughs> <laughs> Starts quoting Shakespeare, huh? Yeah. yeah. To be divested in the form. To be in the glee, the joy of the moment. Yeah, yeah that, that what I'm doing, David, is also that I cannot sell it to in Holland or my family. I cannot sell what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> if you know what I mean. Yes, you know? right, right. <laughs> they aren't buying. <laughs> they aren't buying. No. <laughs> no, there's nothing yeah. that I can show, you know? Yeah. And what well, I can yeah. show is, oh yeah, <laughs> they have their own interpretation of it. So that's 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 difficult, and that's sometimes it is my, uh, not sometimes, a lot of times it is just my struggle. Really, my struggle how to find peace in 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 in, in what I believe in. I I've seen it. I mean, I cannot <laughs> refuse that. I've seen it. I know that I want to go this way, and then the other side is so terrible, difficult. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's, like you've clearly been called by God, and when Jesus says, I'm calling you out of the world, he's basically saying, I'm calling you out of the belief that you are in the past. That the past is over and gone, and the way that we experience that the past is over, is we need new witnesses, you know, and just you, coming over to America, just all the witnesses that you've had since you've been here, these are like witnesses coming, your mighty companions coming, and marrying Jane Marie. You know, it's like, it's a new life. You've told me that too. It's like, I don't just want to marry another woman. I wouldn't have given up everything that I gave up just to go marry another woman. It's, that would not be enough. It has to be part of a much bigger plan. It has to be much, a much bigger extension where basically Let's just bring it back to the mind, that the mind is just now on to a new purpose. It's, a, it's going away from the ego's purpose of hatred, and it's coming to a new purpose. And you are simply calling forth witnesses. And once I started to see that for myself, I was like, okay then, I don't ever have to be like Lot's wife in the Bible, and turn back and turn into a pillar of salt, which is pretty graphic. I remember when I first watched that on the big screen, you know, and you're a little kid and you and you see all the people around her, don't look back, don't look back, and then she, do, she does it, you know. She turns back and then there's this block of salt, this pillar of salt looks like a woman. And I'm, that was just really st striking about how whenever we look back to the past, we try to make any sense of anything from the past, we can't. You know, I've, I've had to just let go myself and just let the witnesses keep coming in. I was doing a movie gathering at the monastery a while back, and I got this piece of mail, and I opened it up, and it was an email, it was an actual email, and I, and I looked around and I said, this is amazing, and I said, um, I, I started to read it to everyone there, so I gathered with all these deep spiritual friends that I've lived and worked with all these years, and the email was going, you need to find some, a new set of mighty companions. And I read it <laughs> to all my existing <laughs> mighty companions. Because this is the email. I just take everything that comes in. It's like, you need to find a new set of mighty companions. What it was, it was saying, is it was talking about breatharianism. You know, it was talking about why do we even need to eat at all. And, and it was like literally a call into the mystic, and she continued to write, oh my gosh, and write, and write, and send, and send boxes, and so on and so forth, but the, but the initial symbol was, it was just, I saw it as a beautiful just symbol of, of opening to transcendence, to complete transcendence. We can't stay fixed, we can't stay locked into anything, we can't take anything and make it comfortable and familiar, and say, oh, this is, this is that. We can't look back and we can't sing that old song. Those were the days, my <laughs> friends, we thought they'd never... Yeah, that's true. I have not to look back anymore. We can't, we can't have any sentimentality. And even with the, the way we see the landscape now, we can't just assume and project a future. 
based on the way we're seeing the landscape now. That, that would be just trying to use the past to make, make project another future. And the Course is saying, don't do that, you know. Now, I was thinking about that too, you know, like, like the, 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 the uh, Israel, what's, what's coming from Egypt, and when they're in the desert, they look back to Egypt, oh, it was better than Egypt, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's that old <laughs> habitual comparison. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. that's, that's, and I'm for sure that's not what I want, I'm, I'm longing so, I, I'm longing so for, to live the life with God, the, 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 just to discover more and more what I have seen, I've clearly seen things, and I'm longing so for it. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't want to look back. No. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I join you in that. That's, that's <laughs> yeah, you wrote me that. You have no idea, but maybe you have an idea. <laughs> you have no idea how it encouraged me that when you wrote me, I'm with you all the way. Yeah. Then, that was really... Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Thank you. I feel that about everyone I meet. Um, I feel like we are lifelong companions. It's like... We, the earth and all of its heaviness and gravity, um, is, is the ego. And we are strapped in with our booster rockets, and we are packing a bunch of extra rockets, because we are taken off from this gravity. We are breaking the gravitational field. Uh, I always thought of that one time. I always used, used to remember growing up watching those big Saturn V, those Apollo missions with the big three stages and all that fuel in this tiny little <laughs> capsule that I was thinking, that's me, I'm strapped in and I'm, they've got, Apollo rockets have got like three big compartments, I've got like five, ten, I don't know, I've got extra. Yeah. People like, you have way more fuel than you need. Nah, just in case. I'm going beyond gravity, I'm going beyond the weight, the heaviness, the judgments of this world that tell us we're just human beings that tell us nobody's perfect. No body is perfect, but, but Christ is perfect, and Christ is our identity. So why should we hold on to limiting thoughts? You know, I love that line in The Course in Miracles, I think it's in the teacher's manual, where Jesus says, God's teachers are not perfect, or they would not be here. And so they come to teach perfection over and over and over. Three times Jesus uses the word over over and over and over, until they have learned it. Learned what? Perfection! Wow! Now that's a goal I can go for. No wonder I could never be in high school and college, you know. I, 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 what color is your parachute? I don't know. Um, <laughs> how, high, how high can you go? Can you go, the sky's the limit. Well, I don't even like that, the sky is the <laughs> limit. I can do better than that. No, Jesus is telling me to teach perfection over and over and over until I've learned it. And I said, alright now, that's something I can go for. The rest I was ready to just sit on the sidelines and say, ah, not yet. Not, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to put my heart into it unless it's, it's truly fulfilling. Unless it's truly reachable. Unless it's inevitable. You know, unless it's the will of God, why would I put my energy in it? So, that's what was beautiful, and that's why it's fun when a book like this comes out, because all this is, is just the same as the website, it's just an expression of let thine eye be single. Really, really go for it. And then nowadays we have what are called like the crystal children, um, and they're called by many different names, but they're showing up more and more in my awareness. They they don't seem to have that baggage, like most of us have all seemed to come with. You know, we, we seem to come with an awful lot of baggage, like a big load of it. And these, these crystal children, they're showing up and you can feel it in them. They, they, they just have a look about them, they have a way about them. They're just symbols of, of transcendence. Um, some of you, the last time I was here, I think we watched the movie Tron, right? Mm -hmm. Over mm -hmm. at, at Andy's house, we watched Tron. And I did, Jason and I and Nikita were there, we were doing all these metaphysical interpretations of Tron. And you remember in that movie that the ISO, the ISOs were discovered inside, and they were, you know, just destroyed. They were, they were wiped out, but then the one 
Iso remained, and she was very important, and she was part of the, the escape from that captive electronic world. And uh, I feel like that's, we're just in a time right now where it's very exciting, because these beings are showing up. They're just ourself, um, they're just reflections of ourself, but of, without all the baggage. And, and there are symbols of um, inspiration that way. So for our community, we're, I think we're just going to see more and more of these uh, ISOs showing up. Just because they're showing up right on time, right on cue, you know, just heralding the awakening. Mm -hmm. well, what's the difference in the crystal children? Do you prefer about indigo children? Indigo? Yeah. Same thing. I mean, I, I think of them in the same way, yeah. 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 Okay. okay.